This is the uh, BTE Eval Tech system, a uh, complete uh, system for function capacity evaluations and post offer employment testing and general strength uh, testing and range of motion. I'm standing on the base of uh, the shelving system. Over here we have our computer card for data collection. Uh, computer system does come with the Eval Tech. These are the various attachments uh, that can be used. Uh, and over here, to my left, we've got the functional range of motion board. So when a test is being conducted, uh, it's uh, simple to go from one setup to the next. So right now we've got a uh, shelf on here that we can use for lifting. Uh, we can bring the other shelf into play with our lifting system. We use a specially weighted crate and a variety of weights that are color coded so that when a clinician selects a weight, the color code will remind the clinician what the weight is, but the person being tested has no idea. That weight is placed inside. When the weight is placed on the shelf, there's a force gauge in the shelf that will record the weight, count it, measure it into the system so that no manual entry is required. Now with the lifting system, the crate can go from any height, lifting from the ground to shelf height, even lifting overhead, if that's what the job requires. Shelves can be adjusted in height quite easily. So if I want to make this shelf higher, and if I want to place this off to the side, I can do that. Or if we want to adjust this to different heights, so you've got a full range of lifting from the floor to well overhead to match any job setup. When the lifting test is finished, these can be put to the side. The shelf can be removed. And then we can start to use some of our other attachments. So for example, if I wanted to do a simple one-handed lift, we can insert that lifting handle. And again, we can change the height. So for somebody who has to lift down low, Again, that's going to be recorded directly, or that can be changed to uh, different positions, different shapes. So if we have to lift the box, this is a little different type of handle uh, to match that box shape. Or if we want a double handle lift, that can be placed in here as well. Locked into place. Adjust the height, so if we want somebody lifting from low or anywhere in between. Pretty easy to adjust, lock into place. There's a height recording over here. Even the height of that is recorded in the software for reproducibility purposes. If we want to use handles that are a little flatter, more like lifting a box, we can switch to those. Another opportunity to use the Valtech system is for simple muscle testing. So instead of doing a manual muscle testing, we can use a pad, adjust the height, get the patient in position. So if I wanted to measure elbow extension strength, rest here, push as hard as you can, strength is recorded. You can change this to other angles. Lower this down so that even if we want to test lower extremity, get the chair into place, get the patient positioned, and they can be pushing against that, measuring the extension strength. So it doesn't have to be a complete functional capacity evaluation. It's a nice system to use for simple baseline strength measurements. And in a moment, I'll show you how to also do a range of motion testing. One of the other unique features of the Avaltech is the ability to change from measuring one hand at a time to measuring bilateral strength. And for that, we use this device, which we call our Universal Task Master. It has two separate load cells which give us the ability to test the strength of both the right as well as the left hands. 
So with these two handles, these can be adjusted to any width. We move our cart a little bit farther away. We can get quite a broad spread. And then here again, insert our handles. Adjust the spread to whatever's needed to match the job. Secure this in place so that it doesn't move. And now we've got a broad spread. Or if we tip this down, I'm going to bring these in a little bit closer. A little more comfortable setting. We can use this for pulling or for pushing. And we're measuring right and left strength difference. So that way we can see if a person is favoring the right side versus the left side. Uh, because if they're lifting or pushing or pulling, on a normal healthy person, you'd expect a pretty even distribution between right and left. Somebody with an injury, you might see that they are favoring one side. This can even be pointed down. We raise this up high. You can bring it all the way up to the top and use it for pulling down. So with these various positioning options, you're really limited only by your imagination when it comes to duplicating various job tasks in position. You can even put on flat plates so that if somebody has to uh, push against the side of the cart, they don't have handles to hold on to. They can be pushing with a flat hand service, which is a different kind of effort uh, to be able to do that. And even something as simple as nursing aids that may have to pull or push a wheelchair. We can set, we can adjust this to, to the width of the wheelchair handles and secure this in place and now they can be pushing the wheelchair pulling the wheelchair we lock these in of course so it's pretty simple go from one position to the next and then put this out of the way when not being used now, as we use, move to uh, smaller muscle groups, uh, some common strength tests such as can grip, if we're just trying to measure grip strength, uh, quick disconnect cable plugs in, connects to a wireless transmitter. This transmitter gets clipped onto the belt of the patient, and now we're ready to do a grip strength test. In the software, I've pulled up a template because you can create templates, you can use uh, function capacity templates. In this case, this person has multiple different tests that we want to do, and it will walk them through that protocol. So I can go one by one, and you'll see some differences in the appearance of the screen as we pull up some of these different tests. But normally, you'd start with the first one. When you're uh, ready to begin, Make sure transmitter is turned on, it is. Click on the green flag, brings up the test screen. You'll notice that heart rate is being monitored. So normally the uh, subject is gonna have a heart rate monitor on, so if their heart rate gets elevated during the test to an unsafe level, it will stop the test for you automatically. Here we have left versus right. It's a matter of clicking on the little go. So it reads the instructions to you. And then as I squeeze, you'll see over here, I'm not giving very good effort. Voice counts down the rest period. We'll do that again and try to do that a little bit more realistically where you'd expect to see more of a, a flat kind of line. Rest period is counted down. Start again. There are recommended rest periods, but you can change those if you like. So it tells me to switch to the right hand, and we're ready to begin. So again, when I squeeze, we're getting the right side. It's counting down. Heart rate is being 
monitored. And as long as um, we're seeing that beating sign, we're in good range. We're not elevating the heart rate too much. So yes, we want to complete the test. So when we are finished, we get our right to left comparison. My uh, left hand is, uh, in this particular test, 15% 15 stronger than the right. We've also got a coefficient of variation, which is a way to look at consistency, as long as that score is below 15%. It's a reasonable indication that, uh, of good effort. Um, if that variation is, is too high, it would be a signal to you to repeat the test. So that data is easy then stored. So when we're finished with that particular test, we'll click on and advance on to the next uh, test in the sequence. When we're not using the data capture for uh, grip, this can be switched to other easy setups. We've got a uh, small pinch meter. So this can be used for measuring pinch strength or individual finger strength, any way that uh, needs to be done. There's also a range of motion goniometer with the movable arms push-button data collection. So if I wanted to measure a patient's uh, elbow flexion as an example, I'd start with it at full extension, click the start button, allow the patient to flex as far as they can, and then while the patient is flexing, I would match this up to the arm, capture that range of motion. Now sometimes it's good to do repeat measures to make sure you're getting full range. So with the software automatically collecting, we'd once again zero, have the patient flex, line this up, capture it again. So it's that quick and easy for any major joint. When you go down to hand functions, we can remove the large extensions and go to the shorter ones so that with these shorter rods on here. Now we can get down to measuring the range of motion of individual digits and individual joints in the digit and it's all push button collects. So it's easy to go from the MPs to the smaller joints all the way out to the PIP joint. Same thing with the thumb, any range of motion, quick and easy. When we're done, we just disconnect, store that away. If we want to do some manual muscle testing, we can also put a portable load cell on here that can now be held by the clinician. And depending on which joint we're testing, we might put a different type of pad on here. There are several different ones to choose from over there. So now, Instead of doing a manual muscle test, we can again move away from the machine if we want to go to seated position, and we can use this to measure a patient's elbow flexion or their shoulder, or again, any of the lower extremities. So the force gauge is gonna record it much the same as it did for the grip strength test. So you'll have reproducibility data uh, to see how well the patient is performing. All of these devices can be calibrated because we have calibration jigs calibration weights, the software walks you through the calibration step by step, records it, keeps a record, so if any of your data is ever challenged, you can re reproduce the calibration record for that day, and you can show that along with uh, your data to show that the machine is reading accurately. When you're not doing these strength and range of motion devices, the other part of the system is our functional range of motion board. With the functional range of motion board, there are many different sections. You'll see them separated by lines or panels on the right, uh, as well as over here on the left. There are these pegs that are to be moved, uh, but the purpose of this is not just the hand dexterity and the function, it's to get patients down in a squatted position and see can they work in that position for an extended period, or perhaps you want to have these pegs up at a higher position filling that panel 
and their task is going to be to take these and move them because this is a good way to get the patient extended with their arms in the air it gets their heart rate elevated it's a good conditioning exercise or maybe we want to work with somebody who needs to learn proper body mechanics so if we start with the pegs over on this side and we want them to move it over there they learn not to just twist but you teach them that they have to take a step so that they're not getting that trunk rotation so it can be a test board there are standard tests for this standard protocols that time and will grade somebody according to MTM standards to see if they're employable, if they can do this quickly enough. Or when you're not doing testing, it becomes a good device to use as part of an exercise routine because it will get your heart rate elevated doing this over and over either squatting down and lifting this up, moving these from low to high or high to low or in various directions. Again, really up to your imagination. So this gives us the complete Valtech system. We've got it spread out here a little bit further than you normally would. In a clinic, you're gonna make it a little more, bit more compact so you can fit it in an area that's about 10 foot by 12 foot. So this is your complete functional capacity testing system by VTE.